Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I wanted to address this whole Rich Paul controversy that just happened as far as the NCAA instituting new rules to requiring a bachelor's degree, LeBron James' response, and then also I want to connect it to ASAP Rocky and how race can rear its head for these black celebrities and what's their responsibility back to black America if we're going to stand up for them. So the NCAA instituted a new ruling essentially requiring uh, agents that are going to represent players that uh, are testing the waters to have a bachelor's degree. Now in and of itself it seems like that isn't racialized until you know the data. When you start looking at the data what you find according to the US Census is that the bachelor's rate for white folks degree rate is 30 percent above 30 percent. But then, and this is according to the U.S. Census. When you look over at black folks, if you break out foreign blacks from native blacks, foreign blacks are above 25%, but native black Americans are around 16%. Now, native black actually includes also second generation Africans and second generation Caribbeans. If you were to take those groups out, we might drop to 12% or 13%. Essentially, this ruling is a way to keep ADOS from actually being part of this industry. Let's talk. So. We look at Rich Paul and we start to ask the question, if he's doing this without a bachelor's degree, what does he need the bachelor's degree for? What does it actually add that makes it more protective for actual players that use agents? It doesn't seem like much. What it does do is allow white folks to have a, a significant advantage in terms of their ability to access this market. Now, I just want to talk about it in context of, of what we're seeing, but before we do that, let's read an article to get very clear on what's going on. LeBron James slams NCAA's new ruling, supported by Kevin Hart, NBA stars. Um, the National Collegiate As uh, Athletic Association's latest ruling on the requirement for agents to represent college basketball players looking to test the waters ahead of the NBA draft has created a major uproar. LeBron James has been leading the criticism and has labeled the latest ruling the Rich Paul rule, as it will keep out NBA's most influential agent from representing college basketball players. The new NCAA ruling requires agents representing college players to have a bachelor's degree, to be certified with the National Basketball Players Association for at least three years, and to take an in-person exam. So when you see this thing, you have to ask, what immediate thing caused them to do this? Is there this string of blacks or whites or Latinos that don't have college degrees that are representing players? No, because most likely you need money to actually do this thing. You need support. You need uh, advantages of, of, of relationship. So inherently, the only thing that we can see is that Rich Paul is doing far too well attached to LeBron James. We see that with him representing Anthony Davis, LeBron James, John Wall, along with so many other players negotiating millions of dollars of contracts without a bachelor's degree. Now, what I say about this whole thing is that contextually we need to start asking the question, if we are going to come out and support ADOS, Black America, what is the responsibility that LeBron James and Rich Paul have to the greater black race? When we look at LeBron James, he hasn't said anything about reparations. See, one of the things that we have to understand, let's slow this down. When we're talking about reparations, we're not just talking about cash payouts. We're talking about being made American. And what you see here is an attempt to strip away the American protections that Rich Paul should have as an individual by making him not American because he doesn't have a bachelor's degree. When I say reparations, part of the policies and the programs provide the protections so you don't have these problems. So that they have to allow black folks to have loopholes and ways out even if they make a general rule. But because LeBron James didn't support reparations or black policy or black politics, here we are. See, Muhammad Ali understood that. The man that should, stood, stands over my shoulder understood that. And that's why he stood up. He understood ain't no point in me being on a yacht alone. Now, LeBron James has done a wonderful job in terms of bringing his immediate circle with him. But inside of LeBron James' approach is the quintessential problem of, of the idea that we need to escape the ghetto. See, what we need to do is build the ghetto. Now, people will say back to me that LeBron started a school. And I commend him for starting a school, but that's a class-based school. There is no evidence that the curriculum in that school is focused on black folks or even ADOS in a more specific way. 
When you look at the uh, the actual board for the school, it's primarily white folks. I believe it's one black person on the board. Don't quote me on that. But I'll show you what the last picture that they had is almost all run, run by white people. So it's great that he's helping poor people. But this is about the uh, idea that we need to focus in on the consequence of being black in America. And we can't then, if we're going to focus in on it, if we're going to create ADOS, if we're going to push for reparations and get it on a presidential stage, if we're going to do this work, LeBron has to be part of that project or when these things happen to him, he got to go it alone. Now, some people will say he's not asking for racial uh, support. Well, you are once you racialize it. See, if you believe in... in, in um, non-racialized, post-racial like realities, believing it in the losses and the wins. And I feel like when I start looking at this thing, far too many black people are coming out as though LeBron James has pushed for reparations and for a black agenda for those black people in Akron right now. For those black people in Louds County that have feces in their backyard. For those people in Los Angeles that are in Skid Row right now. See, we gotta understand that what's your rooting? What is your, your, your push? What is your cause? What is your reason? See, Muhammad Ali was an activist that boxed. LeBron James is just a basketball player. And I feel like for a lot of us, that's hard for us to digest because we love the idea that he started a school. We, we love the idea that he somehow became a woke in the race. Because when Tamir Rice was shot down, that man, that man said uh, he wasn't coming out saying anything. He got to get all the facts. Well, we need all the facts here on the NCAA thing. We need all the facts. What 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 was the full? See, but that's not how we do things. See, we coming out full blast before the facts come out because we already see the facts. That's what happened with Tamir Rice, LeBron. With Tamir Rice, we already saw the facts. That they saw a young black boy um, holding a gun and they automatically assumed that he was violent. We didn't need to have you slow down and say, let me see what's going on. We needed you to come out day one that that was racist. I don't care what the impact would be on Nike stock or on LeBron James shoe or LeBron James brand. That's the way black folks approach Rich Paul today. See, black folks today put their name on the line and say things on Twitter in support of Rich Paul. A Rich Paul that doesn't support them in my mind. See, I'm saying all this because it's time to unpack what is the responsibility of black celebrity? What is the responsibility of ADOS celebrity if we going to be there for them like we are today? Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be there because this is unfair, but I'm saying built into this whole push for reparations is not something just for the poorest black. It's something for all the blacks. Because in, in a sense, what ends up happening is that you get policy that supports and makes it impossible for private sector actors like the NCAA to do what they do without proving that it's not racialized. See, NCAA, under my view, under reparations as I see it, would have to show us that they didn't do this for a racial reason. And if they couldn't show that, then they would be in trouble, period. But this is what happens when you silent on reparations, LeBron. We don't have that policy. So you got millions of dollars, but you ain't got nothing to protect it. You better get online with black folks. See, I, I look, and LeBron did a great article um, in the New York Times on Rich Paul. And this is what he says about starting with Rich Paul. He says, this was in an interview in, in a suite overlooking the University of Akron football field. James, then 29, recalled those conversations with Paul long before either of them was on the sports radar, let alone at his center. He used to listen. This is LeBron James speaking. He used to listen to me and how I was going to get out of the inner city and make a difference. And I used to listen to him say he was going to get out and make a difference, James said. Those conversations turned to how we are going to do it and did to why not to do it together. I, I, I commend the brothers on wanting to do something positive. I commend the brothers on wanting to get out of the inner city. But I think the shortfall is to believe that individual or even, even individual private million dollar acts will supersede what we need the government to do for all black folks. There's no singular class-based school that we need from you. We don't need no more pizza shops. What we need is a black agenda and reparations to repair the nation and to force the nation to see us as American so these things don't happen, not just to Rich Paul, but to some young black dude that, that doesn't have LeBron James as a friend that also wants to be an agent or also wants to be a firefighter or also wants to just be in America and provide for his family. 
in so many like ways we unpack this thing and we ask ourselves today why is it that a black male that isn't a celebrity has to get shot down to be heard while a black male that is a celebrity can make a business uh, assertion or have a business problem done to him see i need you to understand today as i speak to you adolf that i ain't saying nothing for rich paul till he say something for us see i i, I start to understand this thing and i start to unpack it and i start to ask the question what is what is the responsibility of black celebrity if black folks are going to stand up for black celebrity i look over at the asap rocky thing you know asap rocky was locked up in sweden and we see this whole thing with asap rocky where he said a lot of things that other black celebrities i believe have thought but he put it on record a raceless mindset i don't have no responsibility i'm gonna read some of the quotes but then when you're locked up in Sweden, you need black folks to push a black agenda and a black support system to racialize this thing because it is racism. But then at that moment, you want to be black again. See, we don't need you in your losses. We need you in your wins. And we need you in your biggest wins to, t to risk them all, as this man did over my shoulder, and say, if black folks ain't getting treated right, you can have the championship back. That's what we need. So let's look, let's look over at ASAP Rocky and, we, and what we see. Let me read a small section from an article titled Why ASAP Rocky's Proximity to Whiteness Wasn't Enough to Help Him During His Arrest. The news that ASAP Rocky was arrested in Sweden hit on J July 3rd, and initially the reports were that he was arrested because of a street brawl. Naturally, fans and black activists rushed to their social media to demand that the Swedish government release Rocky immediately. As the story developed and we learned we learned that allegedly the reason Rocky was involved in the altercation was to stop a woman from being harassed by two men. And this alone was enough to heighten the anger by the black community. But see, this is the context of it. Rocky has been insensitive when it comes to discussing race in America. In 2015, Rocky was interviewed in Time Out magazine and when asked about his feelings on rappers, rapping about Black Lives Matter and the murder of Michael Brown and Ferguson, he responded, I did not sign up to be no political activist. I want to talk about my, my lean, my best friend dying, the girls that come in and out of my life, the jiggy fashion that I wear, and my new inspirations and, and other things. I don't want to talk about no Ferguson. See, and he went on and on. You don't get to not talk about Ferguson and be black in America. You don't get to think about yourself that way. See, reparations isn't just for poor people or middle class black people, it's for all the black folks. Now, if you wanna do that, just stay locked up in Sweden. Or if you wanna avoid rep uh, reparations, a black agenda, then when this stuff comes out, this NCAA stuff comes out, just take it on the chin. See, fundamentally, I'm telling you now, this is transformative in a way that goes beyond myself, go, goes beyond LeBron James. It is the way to make this not happen anymore, this mistreatment of black folks. Now, some people will say, well, the ASAP Rocky thing is in Sweden. Well, if we had reparations, we would have enough wealth, we would have enough uh, power and privilege in our own government to put massive amounts of pressure on, on the government to do more. Now, some people will say, well, Trump actually put out a tweet. We're not asking for no tweet. Get us ASAP Rocky back right now. We don't care about no tweet. That's not no power to put out no tweet. Y'all can get him back. Y'all know how to fix this. See, black folks in America need to understand that black folks in America got to start doing the work. And black folks in America ain't just Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore and Sandy Darity. No, it's LeBron James. It's ASAP Rocky. It's Beyonce. It's Jay-Z. It's all of these mega stars. See, we have not challenged mega stars to be racialized. We let the 80s go by with Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston and, Do and Bill Cosby, all of these post-racial narratives. And now we casted the image of the black celebrity as separate and apart from race, but ain't being able to use the narratives of race to both sell the image, the content in their music and the background of their story coming from the ghetto and becoming a basketball player. But at the same time, when things go wrong based on race, they basically can come in and then utilize our own energy without ever promising an exchange promising a support promising a pushback a narrative that we not gonna go for it no more see today is an interesting day I'm looking at this rich Paul thing and I'm trying to digest it on one hand I totally get the response by black folks we only have a bachelor's degree rate of somewhere between 12 and 15 percent ADOS 
So you're going to set up a rule that doesn't allow Rich Paul to be an agent because he's doing too well. But at the same time, I look at uh, two weeks ago and four weeks ago and two months ago when LeBron James was silent on reparations. When LeBron James was silent on a black agenda. And I ask myself the question, why can't I get to be silent like LeBron? As a black attorney, it's my responsibility, and as a black superstar celebrity, it's his. Today is the day that we ask and demand black celebrity to push back just like we're pushing back and demand reparations so this don't happen no more. I just wanted to come to you real quick. This is Tone Talks. Please go to ToneTalks.org to subscribe and donate and share this video. Let's get the discussion going, and let's make sure we have a full discussion. <laughs>